potash. Four brothers in Texas were notorious bank robbers, and they came up with a more lucrative target, trains. This is a story about the greatest train robbery in American history. Not only does it inspire a movie, one of the robbers ends up on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. This unremarkable location is the setting for one of the most sensational crime stories of the 20th century. Roundout isn't even a small town. It's pretty much just a street through Lake County, 35 miles north of Chicago. The most action this spot sees is when the train rolls through. But in June of 1924, this intersection of road and rail makes history. So they were looking for a big score. They wanted to really get their hands on a lot of money. It was the last major train robbery in the United States. The Newton Gang of Texas, four brothers, Doc, Willis, Joe, and Jess. Together with Brent Glasscock, an expert in safe cracking and explosives, they robbed dozens of banks and then trains all across the country. They claim they took in more money than the other more famous outlaws combined and yet never killed anyone. A tip leads to a lucrative target, a mail train with a treasure, large amounts of currency from the Federal Reserve headed for banks. The Newton Gang teams up with four Chicago criminals with a carefully planned heist. As the train comes through, Willis Newton and Brent Glasscock are disguised as crewmen and pull guns on the engineer and order him to stop. And they took uh, over the train using gas masks and formaldehyde bombs, made the workers come out of the train. The robbery took maybe less than a half hour, and the men sped off into the night with uh, approximately over $3 million worth of jewelry, cash, and bonds. Nicole Stocker is with the Dunn Museum in Lake County. And this one shows more of the chaotic scene inside of that car. As seen in these paintings by courtroom artist Andy Austin, four Cadillac sedans are waiting. The railroad crew loads 63 sacks of mail and money into the cars. Inside the sacks, a total of $3 million in cash and bonds, today worth $45 million. This is the historic marker for the Roundout train robbery. This train robbery was meticulously planned, but in the chaos, one of the gang members made a costly mistake. In the confusion of the smoke, headlights, and adrenaline, something their plan did not account for. One of the gang members accidentally shoots Willis Newton several times. Overall, the plan was executed very well during the robbery itself, but at one point, one of the men, Brent Glasscock, thought that another Newton brother uh, was actually one of the train workers, and he shot him five different times. That one error led to them being captured pretty quickly, too. The gang sorts out the money at a garage belonging to the chauffeur of the powerful 19th Ward Alderman. Knowing Chicago's reputation for corruption, the feds don't trust officials here to investigate. So they call in Inspector Charles Clarahan from New York to go undercover. His team tracks the robbers here to an apartment on Chicago's west side. They grab Joe Newton trying to escape out the back door. They find some banknotes. Then they arrest Willis Newton nearby with a lot of cash and blood-stained pants. Jess Newton and the others get away. Jess Newton escapes to Mexico. The U.S. can't extradite him, so they send an undercover agent to track him down. And they knew that he liked to ride wild horses and try to claim that he was an amazing horse rider. And so they decided to set up a sting operation and bribed him and sent an undercover agent to Mexico to tell him about this rodeo in Texas. He supposedly bought a new hat and boots and came across the border. And as soon as that happened, agents arrested him and brought him back. 
Wiretaps of Glasscock and Murray reveal much of the money is buried outside of Kansas City. A treasure hunt turns up nothing at first, but then in Oklahoma City, they find six jars with more than a million dollars. You can see the mail sacks are very generically marked, but they knew exactly which numbered ones they wanted. The Newton gang knows the route, the right car, the right bags. A nice quiet place, a good place to stop the train. Bob Storzik is a railway historian. The authorities had to know immediately that this was an inside job. Correct, yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, the guy who gave them the information, who was a postal inspector, actually did something kind of foolish. He actually went and inspected this particular car and talked to one of the clerks about what kind of security they had and how they handled different things. So he really kind of left, let himself open for a follow-up on that. Postal inspectors arrest the inside guy, a corrupt postal inspector named William Fahey. He also was not the smartest maybe with spending his money from the robbery and was found to be connected with quite a bit of the stolen um, currency. Even a politician was involved, James Murray. And so all of these men kind of came together um, to make connections, but also to carry out this robbery. They both get 25 years in prison. We fixed to make history. The spectacular story inspires the 1998 film, The Newton Boys, starring Matthew McConaughey as Willis Newton and Ethan Hawke as Jess Newton. And I promise never to tell anybody where they came from. We promise never to rob your little bank. Would you welcome <laughs> Joe Newton, Joe? In 1980, Joe Newton appears on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Now it says you, in four years, you robbed 80 banks. Yeah, we robbed a lot of them. Six trains. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you lose track after a while when you're, when you're having fun, don't you? Yeah. Take a long time to name everyone, but I can name 30, 40. Yeah? Oh, like that. Did you? And how much money we got? Is that right? Yeah. Now, with all of that, did you did you end up a, a rich man, or did you end up just a, as a jailbird? <laughs> well, kind of both. Yeah. Ba mostly a jailbird. A rich jailbird. Yeah. Now, when when's the first time you went to jail? Uh, that uh, round out train robbery. Yeah. Yeah. It, I thought you were going to put that on to stick me up. <laughs> Die hard, don't they? Oh, Tell you what, let me do a commercial here. But the story is not over yet. During the course of the trial, they realized that one particular sack was missing that possibly had a little over a million dollars in it. The thought is that that sack has never been found. This history marker does not reflect the excitement of that night or the charisma of the Newton gang. A century later, Rondout is still not a destination, just a place you pass through from one to the other, past the iron and steel, and the occasional flashing lights warning the train's coming through again, just as it did on the night this railway made history. Coming up on Backstory. The infamous Camp Douglas. What's there now? What happened to the prisoners? We search the city for traces of a Civil War backstory. And a toy company is long gone, but you can still find one of its toys. And in the WGN time capsule, amazing footage from a crucial battle at sea.